So welcome to the Crooked Paths podcast, and my name's Marcelo, and I'm interviewing today Johan and Gustav. They're these um, young teachers of this class that I really love at Tinkui Spiritual Center, where I teach yoga and participate in other things. And I love their class. It's called Sukumotorisk <laughs> Training for Men. So psychomotor training for men. That's what it translates into. And their class has been really, a, for me, it's been a wonderful experience to partake in that class because it just lets this flow of male energy come out and the male personality come out just in a closed room and, and you know, safe environment. So welcome, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And hi, Johan, please say a little something about yourself. And Yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Johan. <laughs> And I have been, yeah, working with Gustav this one year and a half with this uh, concept we started. And I also do um, individual treatments and, right. uh, and healing. And I'm very much interested in exploring myself and others and helping get awareness of yourself, your soul and body and emotions. Yeah, well, you're doing a good job with it. Yeah, you. I see that in class. And Gustav, what about you? If you could say a little something about yourself. Uh, I'm born in Sweden. I've been in Denmark for the last 10 years. And I love doing this class together with Johan on Wednesdays. And I work in the prisons with the refugees a lot of the hours in my week. So I do physical work, physical training um, and individual uh, treatment with refugees in prison. So uh, I'm also passionate about working with the with the body mind and particularly working with men and body mind. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I could tell. You know, the reason I wanted to interview you guys is because I could tell you really care uh, passionately about what you do, and that you want to help people get more in touch with themselves. Especially, you know, in the men's class, that's what I've noticed works quite. It works really well. So, if first of all, if you can describe what is sukumotorisk training, what is psychomotor training, first of all, what is that education, what did it entail for you? Mm -hmm. mm. Well, first of all, it's a three and a half years uh, education here in Denmark. So, it's a sukumotor is like, if you uh, ask me about what is yoga, <laughs> it's very different, it can be very many different things, but the main thing is that you get the body awareness, the, the sense of your body back and the connection between the mind and the body. So we try to, um, and also the feelings. So we try to uh, not separate them as a lot of things does, uh, to be cognitive or just work with the body, but work more holistic. So it's more, it's a holistic approach. Yeah. So with the body, the mind and the feelings, the emotions, mm. all those things. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And it has a long history in Denmark. So I think it's been in Denmark since the 1930s or something like that. Oh, really? Yes. More than, more than in Sweden or? In Sweden, they, they don't have a, 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 a tradition in this, in this um, what do you call it, this yeah. uh, education as much as in Denmark. Uh, so it had, uh, it started, uh, in Denmark a long way ago and by time also a lot of different approaches has been integrated into the the, the, the education like like understanding of gestalt therapy and now mindfulness is also coming into the education. So, so mindfulness is coming in. Yeah, exactly. Huh. So there's a lot of approaches that have come in and been an integrated part of the education uh, a little by little. Yeah. Okay, so like there's a broader perspective coming into it. Mm, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And what about I remember, Johan, you mentioned that most of your classmates were female and you, you, there's just a few of you guys in it. And was it the same case with you, Gustav? We were in the same class. Oh, you were in the same class? Yeah, so. Okay, so you guys sort of huddled together. <laughs> exactly, we were buddies in the class. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it, um, you know, was there a diff were the teachers also female or? Was most there... of them, yes. Yeah. yeah. And was there, did you guys have a tough time with that? No, I wouldn't say because we had, we had each other. And I mean, it definitely what it was. I, mean, I came from being a, a carpenter uh, with a class of thirty guys to a class of thirty 
women plus three guys or something like that. Uh, so it was a big difference. But I enjoy it very much coming into this energy of working with yourself and self-love and so on. And, uh, and, but I really enjoyed having the other guys on the team also because that really made me feel at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And what about, you said that for you male, working with a male, you know, has been very interesting. Can you say something more about that? Yeah. Um... The thing that we, when we finished the education, yeah. we were meeting and like, uh, just talked about, we want to do something to do with this male thing. And we didn't really know what we were going to do about it. Uh, but we knew that it was important for us to, to do it. Um, why? Yeah, why? Mm, I think one of the things that uh, we talked about that we learned through the education that this expression of yourself is uh, f f for me it's very important to show how you are feeling through the movements of your body or your um, your voice and and in, in a lot of practices also in yoga you are in your own little bubble, uh, so you're isolated from others, and a lot of the things we're doing in in our class is the expression and meeting other people. Yes, and you have contact in your class. And you have contact. You have a lot of um, exercises where you have eye contact and body contact, and also really get a sense of each other. Uh, so, Beings, you can say, yeah. feelings. So you have to be more uh, aware and empathic, and so you get real. I would, I, I would like to facilitate authentic meetings, mm -hmm. uh, also, but also discover yourself. So also these authentic meetings. It's, uh, and I think the way to do that is to be open and be authentic with all there is. So. So uh, one of the things that's important is that you express it because otherwise you don't get seen yeah. in what you are. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, yeah. yeah, I would also say that it actually started already during the education mm -hmm. because uh, one of the teachers, a female teacher, she asked us how would you do like a physical program, physical training program to to attract men because the kind of work we were doing at that point in school somehow had a, somehow a feminine touch to it somehow the movements was kind of soft and the approach was very much like taking care of yourself and looking inward and being sensitive to yourself which is really really important especially like in therapeutic circumstances sure, sure, sure. But uh, when we were asked about be doing it for men, we could see what, what, what we got attracted to was to kind of find a more upright energy where you can, are able to stand in yourself and in the world even though it might get uncomfortable and even though it might be challenging. So kind of finding into this kind of warrior energy or centering energy in the midst of chaos or whatever. Yeah, so you guys came up with this class by yourselves exactly were you mm. had, did you have any inspirations I think we had both a lot of inspiration for, for background what yeah. do you say there's a lot of things we have done before that we use uh, I've done a lot of, of uh, acting so okay. I've done a lot of uh, body work and uh, free movement and kind of dance theater and a lot of uh, therapeutic Therapeutic word, Thera work, therapeutic <laughs> work, yeah, work yeah. Uh, by myself and with others, and been very important for my life that I did that. Uh, so that's also a thing that I want to bring into other people's life, and also to have it in my own life. Have this room um, that's where I can express or be be authentic, be free. Yeah, uh, and it's, and I think it's so important that you have this space. Yeah, and uh, yeah, with others. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. 
And I, I'm also been doing a lot of like expressive, experiential kind of therapies with a lot of catharsis and so on. And always been kind of fascinated to the to the kind of physical work that is kind of on the edge. So I've been doing a lot of like the full contact martial arts and parachuting and done that sort of stuff that is kind of in extreme. Yeah. But I can also say like uh, on my body it has like consequences. But of course I'm torn out my body and starting to have a lot of injuries. So it's kind of interest how to kind of create that kind of awakened state but without going into all these extreme situations mm, mm. Yeah. right and what about you guys did you notice something with female energy and male energy you know because some people talk about that some people there's reactions to that do you notice anything about that what i can see is that because um we both have and i'm getting into certain circumstances later we're going to different kinds of men's groups and then and, and dealing with men's questions whatever that is and your male identity and what i've been seeing that if you post some post something about that on facebook book afterwards like just mentioning that you have been in a men's group it seems to be creating a lot of reactions into into a lot of both men and women oh it's like some people start to feel excluded because oh you start to work with a men's group, so that means okay, it's only men that are able to be there, and why is that important? Why isn't women allowed, and so on? So it's really interesting to see that when you got an urge to work on your male identity and be together with men for your own sake, for and for the sake of the tribe, it seems to provoke a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you, yeah, because I remember in Tinkui, there's some classes that are only for women. Yeah, yeah, right. That a lot, or not a lot, but that's more. Yeah. You're the only class. Only You're the only men. class dedicated yeah. for men. Yeah. Well, Just for men, I or... think so, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it seems yeah. like it at the yeah. moment. Yeah. At the yeah. moment. Yeah. And were, you know, you guys must have seen the film Fight Club. Mm -hmm. yeah. And were you influenced by that a bit? Yeah, because well, because the Tyler, the Brad Pitt character, character's name was Tyler Dearden, and he was describing how men have been brought up by women. You know, and they're just mm, too, yeah. they're sort of like mama's boys and yeah. too soft and yeah. too sweet and too gentle, which I think are good qualities too yeah. and balanced. But also I had to go through martial arts training to become more, let my, to become stronger and let my feminine side come out more naturally as well. Yeah. Yeah. What, so what about you guys? What have you yeah. guys? Well, I guess we, we talked a lot about what is this uh, power we have male and female it's not necessarily aggression or this anger that is uh, it can be it can because the anger or aggression has the same uh, movement by the body for example you kick out you push away but it can also be from another place of another calmness and um, another what? A calmness. Calmness? Okay. Calmness. Yeah. And um, that can be uh, a useful force instead of a destructive force. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's so important to make a line between these two. So a lot of the exercises we are doing are trying to connect to this powerful state together with another person. So we stand um, in front of each other and push each other by the arms, by still standing, being grounded, uh, and feel this energy, and feel this power, and not trying to win. There's never a, a you can say, a loser in our uh, exercises. Right. It's very important for me and Gustav that, that we talked about that it has to be uh, not a competition, because there's so many male activities as sports as um, a lot of things that has to do with there has to be a winner and a loser and uh, and it's a different energy that we're trying to trying to build each other up instead of one is standing looking down right. <laughs> at the yeah. other person yeah. so that's a that's a important thing uh, in all the exercises that we have to build up our resources and stand by uh, ourselves in our own uh, yeah powerfulness yeah that is a nice nice thing in your class that is not a competitive thing it's like this support that comes up 
yeah working through your stuff yeah and I must say also that that kind of way of working makes sense like in in, in when you speak about kind of evolution and history also I think because like if you look back 5,000 years the way people were living there at that point that the men were collectors and or the people were collectors and hunters and the, usually the men went out during the day and they, they didn't they, they weren't com competing with each other but they needed each other to survive and they neither each other's individual qualities someone was maybe a planner someone was a good shooter or builder or whatever and they needed to work as a tribe to uh, to to survive really yeah and they needed this kind of powerful energies and qualities in order to make that work happen and i think it's that's kind of in a way what i think is that we kind of try to create in the workshop also kind of going into that primordial primordial energies and and and, and kind of yeah, as as a way of really getting into our biology as they used to do at that point in time. Mm, naturally, they exactly. did it naturally. Yeah. So talking about like primordial energy, if anyone was listening, you know, standing outside the door of one of your classes, you know, and they would hear these men roaring and screaming, mm. and the, you know, the whole the whole thing of it. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun to to listen to these sounds <laughs> yeah. and getting into your core feelings and whatever it is, and mm -hmm. and you also do that um like that haka dance that the yeah. Maoris do. Mm -hmm. You 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 have that element in there with the mm -hmm. stomping of the feet and making these wild faces mm -hmm. and going into the I love that part. You know, it's like very. You see different people's personalities coming through. Mm. How did you? How did you decide to bring those elements in there? Well, it's. I think we thought about it as this really masculine, like hundred percent masculine yeah. power. Yeah. I think that we thought about that picture, like of this really strong male, really this broad face. And standing in his own power, and I think it's a very powerful way. If you haven't seen it, that try to use of it. The haka <laughs> dance, yeah, yeah. so great, and and it also so uh, you get this sense of life force. I think mm -hmm. also when we do it together, and one of the thing I f think also that it helps that we have so much control when we are around. Um, interacting with each other in the street, in the supermarket, with our friends and family. So when you get into a room and you look like a crazy person, <laughs> uh, it helps, like, it, it's an eye, icebreaker. You, yeah, you yeah. get a sense like, oh, you are ugly too, you could, your tongue is like, wow, in your eyes and you look so weird. <laughs> and it's a nice place to meet yeah. each yeah. other. Yeah. Because then we, oh, okay, now I can relax, I have been really weird and ugly in front of these people now I can I don't have to put on my happy face yeah, or my smooth yeah. face or right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it takes the seriousness out of us and you can uh, reach a big like container of resources within yourself I think nowadays you talk about like doing power poses in order to reduce stress and get more resource for example and before they did haka that was like an, a, a natural power pose like 100% and mm -hmm. So it has, has a lot of wisdom to do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It feels very primordial, like you mm -hmm. said, like timeless. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Timeless is a good point because everybody, like the men after the training, it's like they recognize themselves in that energy somehow. And you know, at the end of the class, we sit down, you know, you have a relaxation period, mm -hmm. and then we have a sit down time when, like, um, people just express. The guys express how they feel. And from what I've noticed is that people are pr really relaxed there. They're feeling very natural. And they describe how they came into class feeling kind of tense and stressed out. And then their faces and everything had changed. They felt much better about themselves. You know, like they released a lot of stress and energy, nervous energy that was in the, stored in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of class, it seems like, it's a very special place where people can, the guys can really share how they're really feeling about things. Mm -hmm. Openly, honestly, and they're supported and anything they say is, is heard with, with you know, a deep mm -hmm. compassion as well. And it seems to have risen naturally. Have you seen that a lot in your classes? 
we hear that kind of all the time that people come with a particular maybe a low energy and come out of it with a high energy and more happy and more ready for the day. Yeah. 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 So it can be. Yeah. But also life. Uh, yeah. The openness that mm. we built through the body exercises where we don't really speak together mm. doing the exercise, but we meet each other through con body contact, eye contact, it makes um, you can trust each other in yes. another way yes. than just we can, everybody can sit and talk, but not everybody can make a massage <laughs> on each other on people you never met or look them in the eye. It's it's uh, if you think about it, how many times do we look a person directly in the eye mm. Mm. and and touch a physical contact, and yeah. it makes such a difference. Um, I think so. You can open up other parts of yourself. You can be more sin sincere because you feel safer because you have this other contact. Yeah. Yeah. Deeper contact. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's really interesting that we're talking about this right now because we don't usually talk very much about this this class or this teaching. Um, no words almost in the in the class, but it seems like what we're talking about kind of happens naturally without any words being mentioned about it. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. and you guys, you must have noticed that you, with all your training and all your experience. You also notice that a lot of people can keep a lot of tensions, a lot of stress, a lot of emotions in the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about that? Just in general, men and women, you know? What have you noticed about that? Well, and the effects of that? Well, we use some of the knowledge we have, like from, uh, from bioenergetics, for example. So we usually do some, some poses from there where we consciously um, put ourselves in like in certain stress positions to start activating the, the kind of natural uh, release from the body and making sounds and it's quite obvious when you look at it in class what kind of release of both tensions emotionally and physically that has on the on the students yeah. and also I think that a lot of the tension is by suppressing your expression Yes. Uh, both, both with the, your voice, you're not telling the whole truth True. Yeah. Uh, by yourself or to others, or uh, you're lifting, you're carrying too much, mm -hmm. it puts weight on your shoulders. There's so many of these analogies that make so good sense. So you've seen it, you've seen it in people's bodies, yes. right? I bet you guys can probably look at a person and right away tell where they have a lot of stress and tension and if, if they're really tied up inside of themselves as well. Yeah, yeah. getting better and better. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. Because I've noticed that from, doing, from teaching yoga and doing yoga, and mm -hmm. I could tell right away how a person is and how alive they feel or how tense they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So by, by this, if you can let go of this tension by expressing what's in there, it can release these stress or tensions in the body. It can help soften them, and uh, yeah. So it's interesting to see, like you say, the faces yeah. can be different. Yeah, I've seen that also in my yoga classes. Yeah. People's faces at the beginning of class stress, and then at the end they're like smiling. Their eyes are glittery. Yeah, yeah. Um, the recently one of the classes, the first class that I did of you guys, there's a guy. There's a guy who who took the class and he was saying that he was doing a teacher's training in yoga and he was the only guy in a, you know, with like 15 other women and so he, he felt really great in your class to so like, <laughs> he came in and he was bothered. I don't know if you, re you guys have taught so many classes but I re it was my first class I remember his facial expressions, he was like in a bad mood, he was a little twitchy and you know, and then, then he just like, you know, it's like sort of when we're doing the exercise, we're sort of walk and we walk into each other and push a little bit. You know, he was like a little pushing a little hard. And then at the end, by the end of the class, he just he had released so much of this <laughs> this tension that he had. And he felt so much better. And he said he said a deep thank you to you yeah, guys, yeah. you know, explaining what had happened to him. Yeah. That he needed to get in touch with that. Yeah. And also that that's 
that's the point I think also that this powerfulness can it doesn't have to be destructive because, right. mm -hmm. and it can be in a nice place where you give resistance to other maybe people would like to get pushed I would like because then I can push back <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's a you meet each other in this uh, powerful state and it's it gives so much air I experience every time when I get this when I get um, permission, you can say, yeah. to to be this powerful, and I just push you away, and and uh, you know, say wrestle or you doing this like small boys are doing yeah. in kindergarten. Yeah. They're lying on the floor like mm. on top of each other, not hitting, but like just wrestling around. Yeah, a little bit playfully, and yeah. it's not. There's no competitiveness at all. No. Just to reiterate yeah. that, uh, yeah. and and uh, it's so liberating to do that. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. just ah, oh, uh, you can breathe again. Yeah, I think also it's really a really sensitive area because it must be a really good sense that we many of us have learned to not express that kind of aliveness and and being more cultivated and being more like always nice and smiling and kind of put a limit on ourselves that it's a sensitive area area because then we are kind of opening it up to this aliveness that was buried at some point in time so there's a lot of also I think emotions related to this about is it really safe to ex express this amount mm -hmm. of energy mm -hmm. so it okay. needs to be a good container for this to come out it's yeah. really important yeah. so so it's, what you're saying is it sounds like people put on these straight jackets yeah and then they can't get out of it they put yeah. it on themselves and plus the society puts it on them then yeah. they can't get out and be natural afterwards exactly so what would be like an ideal society for you guys you know just just as a hypothetical you know well well we've been talking about for example like something for us that could be a interesting to come into the educational system to have this kind of classes in schools or have this kind of classes with maybe uh, parents and children or fathers and sons or something like yeah. that to have some to sounds great integrate this kind of stuff also on a, mm -hmm. on a early uh, age for for people that could be great yeah. yeah yeah that sounds fantastic yeah yeah that's a that's a great idea you guys mm -hmm. should approach some you know institutions yeah some educational institutions with this yeah, yeah. Um, I have a I want to say something and I want to get your comments on this uh -huh. it's connected to what we're talking about right now mm -hmm. there was this um there's this wise man in India and he was describing he was describing a situation in an Indian society he said that in India you have these huge bulls they're they're these very they weigh like a thousand you know mm -hmm. they weigh a thousand kilos let's yeah. say huge bulls two and a half like one and a half like three meters tall almost or two and a half meters tall gigantic powerful uh -huh. powerful beast and he said that in india these super incredible powerful beasts they castrate them you know what castration mm, is yeah, yeah they castrate them and have them pulling carts have them what pulling carts uh -huh. carts just just turning them into a beast of burden, as they say in English. Uh, a beast for working in the fields. Yeah. So this huge bull with incredible potential yeah. gets castrated. Mm -hmm. and, and it ends up just pulling a cart. Yeah. And this guy said, um, society does the same thing to people. And mm. he was talking about Indian society, but he really meant all societies do the same thing to people. Yeah. And it seems like your classes have to do more with like, people feeling their inner strength again yeah. and it, I would imagine if you taught a female class it would because some women have been asking about your classes why you know yeah. how about some female <laughs> classes yeah. that you guys would also do something about that you know empowering people mm. yeah. we have done it with mixed uh, groups also and it, it doesn't seem to be a, a men's thing only at all right no. yeah. right yeah so yeah, you have to think about that there's some energy, this expression, this powerfulness, it's in all of us, male and female, and it has to be brought out there because everyone get this has this need, I would say, to to be themselves in all their splendor 
and powerfulness and uh, yeah and it's uh, it can be difficult to find this space I found it in fear right, right. where I started to to find wow I can be uh, more than I am <laughs> or more than I'm expressing here so I th that was my way out you can say of my straight jacket yes. because I was so restricted uh, for example with anger I was terrified of being angry oh was and was that only in your family or do you think that's a northern European um, um, situation uh, both in my family but also in in general I think anger is, uh, is such a taboo to be angry uh, and I I, I I thought it was the same for many years when I was <laughs> younger as this powerfulness. Oh. So, like I said, like the same emotions, the same tense in your body when you feel really powerful and angry can be the same. So I restricted a lot of this. Uh, so you restricted your own empowerment. Yes. Without realizing it. Yeah. From the societal conditioning. Yes. Ah. So so I. When I tried to explore this and try to find out, wow, I can be powerful without being destructive, without uh, disrupting, <laughs> just breaking walls, or I've been trying like just to smash uh, things into a wall or something, just to say, oh, I can do it without uh, people getting killed. Yeah. There's so much, so many fears that is taught in school and to express your body. You have to sit still in school and learn. Don't uh, move on the chair. Don't be be well behaved. Be well behaved. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and if it, that if we don't get a break from that, if you don't uh, break the habit of uh, of just being polite and nice and have this calmness to your system and and it at a point I, I would say it would get overheated or something would break inside you or if it doesn't get yeah or there would be a huge explosion yeah 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah yeah and I think maybe it is also uh, something particularly uh, you northern European as you say like there is a certain kind of well behaving like we call it the yantelon for example in, in the, like you shouldn't believe you are something yes 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 right and, and so mm. there is something about that in, in our northern countries yes right uh, the yante laws yeah, exactly. right but I think right. like, like the analogy with the with the bulls you were talking about yeah. I think you hear about it like being a sheep and then being a lie lying among sheep and and they would call it was Anderson with the the, the duck what's it called yeah, the ugly duck yeah. oh yeah, the exactly. ugly duck yeah, yeah, there's yeah. always like in the stores about that people have put limitations and on themselves believing there are some something they are not somehow and I think it's very beautiful of creating a space where they can break out of that mm. Mm. yeah so our hope is that they can go from the class and and maybe change something out in their lives when they go from there because yeah. they have been breaking this habit one place yeah and maybe can bring out this energy or this feeling of themselves out somewhere else definitely uh, so that's also the point that we start there and maybe we can transform other relations or uh, yeah 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 because yeah. when we get used to these energies little by little we can start to yeah like you say start to integrate them in small proportions into our work and our relationships with women or men or whatever yeah yeah mm. yeah I agree I agree it's vitally important mm -hmm. and everyone is a crooked has their own crooked path <laughs> yeah yeah definitely do you know where that expression comes from the crooked paths uh, not really oh it's this um it's this poet writer William Blake ah, British yeah and he said improvement creates straight roads but the crooked roads without improvements are roads of genius. Um, yeah. Just connected to that. Yeah.
It's so, yeah, I know it's profound, and that everyone has this uniqueness and their own talents. And yeah. what you're talking about in the primordial times of hunter gatherers having to find what each other's talents were yeah. to to help the the group survive. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in today, there's just such an excessive amount of conformity. Yeah. I was in a in a men's group a couple of weekends ago, where the question was in the in the opening circle, like now we all sitting here. And that means that something in us have survived, like something in our genes have survived because we're all sitting here and we are, have been allowed to be a part of the tribe for all those years, centuries. And so we were going to mention, well, what is our individual contribution to the tribe? And mentioning that, and there is space for all these qualities. So. And it was really a really beautiful way of thinking about it, like, okay, what, what kind of qualities do I really have that that I can contribute to all these men or people sitting around me. And mm. they have their own individual qualities that I um, I shouldn't be jealous about, but I should adore everybody's uh, individual quality because they have equal as much of contributing. So I think yeah, and maybe get inspired as inspired, well. Inspired, exactly, yeah. 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 And what about with... Um, Male and female interactions. Have you noticed anything from the physical, the sukumotorisk training that you guys have? Have you noticed anything with male and female um, interactions with each other that might be different? You know, with body language and you mean like body after posture? you've been to the class, how you relate to yeah, 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 are. yeah. Can just speak from my experience when, from my own woman that she uh, she really loves when I'm coming home and that's been been to that and she can feel I'm alive and I'm I'm, I'm very like vibrant and present for her so ah. she gets pretty fired up when when I come home from this kind of <laughs> so it's a good thing sounds like a great thing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but also I think it's funny that there's a lot of women also in Tinkwi and a lot of them. Have been outside there's a, a lounge area yeah. where you can sit and drink tea and right and uh, it's been so many times that walking out and the women smiling all over the face <laughs> and they're oh we heard all your screams <laughs> and yelling yeah. and roars stomping, stomping roars. yeah and and it's and i think so important also for women that men are that all of that Mm. All of what they are, and not restricting themselves. It's so, it's uh, yeah, it's it's sexy to be <laughs> all what you are. Mm. It's uh, it's you're vibrant. You have another color in your mm. skin. You're you're totally alive. Yeah, you're yeah. alive, and it's uh, you're feeling good. Yeah, yeah, you're feeling good. Mm. So you notice that the women who are hanging, they kind of they kind of like that, yeah, that and they would too. like to to have that also, not us, but they have this aliveness to them yeah. and I think that's also why there's a lot of women that want to be be in the class uh, there's a class before where we have a yoga teacher and she always says I will take a beard on next time I'll <laughs> take a beard? A, a beard oh she'll take a she'll wear a beard, yeah, and a beard and class. Kind of class. oh yeah she wants to join your yeah, class yeah. <laughs> she really wants to join the class uh, yeah. yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, because of course all these qualities we're talking about that, I mean, it's not, it's also in, in, includes the life of women, of course. Yeah, much. it's universal. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. universal. Yeah, and we actually talked about why it's important just that the men meet there and not women allowed. And we talked about this, all these energies, we have the same energies, but as men and as women, we can... Um, this mirror we have of um, we can look at other men and they look more like us so we ref reflect and feel more um, yeah, what do you say together or have united more, united when you can have this mirroring of the same gender uh, and I've, and it it's I think it's uh, more important than than you would think that you have these societies and and also there's there are so many groups of women women that meet and have these uh, really strong strong uh, um, groups where they meet and do their thing 
And it's so funny that also my when we put post it on Facebook and then they can be this. Uh, and why can we be there? It, it's uh, because there was a discussion on Facebook when we opened our first classes. What uh, happened? Uh, 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 oh, there was some women who asked, "Why can't can't we be there?" And it's it's difficult to yeah. to to sense the the words when it's then. And there was a, a male who hasn't been to the class. I didn't know him. It's like, "Why are you asking this?" If it was uh, only for women, you would never a man would never have asked True. why. True. And then the discussion just came a bit ugly because, <laughs> because then it became this gender thing. Oh. Then why are we excluding and you are prejudiced uh, by um, the male thing? And but it and uh, but she was just curious because she hadn't seen this male group thing before. Mm. Mm. So so it's also about understanding. I think that males. Do have this uh, need of meeting with other uh, males? Uh, yeah, it's a primal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a primal thing. I think also it's talked more and more about this absent father syndrome. True, like society true, and true. Like fathers who maybe were there, but were, were kind of absent in their energy, or fathers who just weren't there at all, and and all the consequences that has on both uh, young women and young men growing up. And I think somehow what we need to do today is so if, we, if, we, if we have part of that syndrome, we can always find new fathers somehow in our life to, to be role models for us mm -hmm. and, and, and search that kind of circumstances. And this is just one opportunity for that. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys should also in the future teach a, a class for women as well, just for women. I yeah. think that would be, you know, for their... That will be quite an interesting rounding off of your experience. Mm. Yeah. And hopefully also to the spring we will start having classes in a, in a yoga center in, in Copenhagen. So it will be part of probably a, a program for, for people who need a life change. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Great. So that we're both, both men and women. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And have you noticed any big changes in some individual people that you've worked in or, you know... You you know they came in and they're really tied up emotionally, psychologically, physically, and then you guys helped set up some program for them or gave them some guidance, and suddenly they started, you know, thawing out, becoming more relaxed. You know, did, have you done stuff like that and seen some big changes in people? We have stories about how we heard hear that people they, they like they use this energy and they and they can take it out. As we said, when they come out to the women and so on, I think uh, I think it's very important to have like it's not a one one time in the week thing because it's something you really need to take out and practice somehow every day and make it apply a habit. to one's life, yeah, uh, a yeah. habit. And and I think it it um, it it has definitely have an impact. And how much is gonna make like an impact on the whole life? It it refers to how much you take it into your everyday life, and how make it your own practice. So, but we have heard positive stories. I think mm. definitely. Yeah. One, we had a practice today, a lesson today, was a person there was who found a feeling he never had before. He said that this. Uh, he he said he said he, he felt like. A warrior when he came, but this a bit aggressive warrior. Yeah. Uh, and now he felt like this peaceful warrior. But that, and he said he was reading this book, the Peaceful Warrior. Right. Uh, and said so now I understand what the book is about. Yeah, yeah. He said right. that today. Um, yeah. And and I think that is also what you talk about is this aggression and the opposite the oh, the powerfulness and at, to find this this. Uh, calm centered strength uh, and just to have a glimpse of it mm -hmm. then you can then you can co go back to it if it doesn't have an idea or a, a feeling of how this does this feel like how is it to be here uh, you will go look for it in a football game or you go 
<laughs> hitting some people in the street or, or it can be extreme things like Gustav said like go parachuting or bungee uh, jumping or yeah. something it doesn't have to be that mm. it can be uh, have a different quality to it okay um, yeah um I'm sure you guys have seen the Star Wars movies. Yeah. All yeah. of them? Yeah. Well, Most of I don't them. think I've seen the new couple of ones, but the old ones. That's but you it. remember where Luke Skywalker, he was being trained by Yoda. Yeah, yeah. And remember Yoda, you know, Luke, Luke kept saying, I can't do this. You know, I can't. He was trying to do something that Yoda had him do. And uh -huh. he just, I can't do it. And Yoda said to him, because of that, you fail. And then Yoda was able to lift the spaceship just with his mind, you know, the, the, mm. the, the remember that? And then for part of his training, Luke had to go into this dark cave. Do you remember? To face his fears. Mm. I don't actually remember that, but... Okay, oh, yeah. well, okay, yeah. well, he, it was part of his training, he had to go into this cave area, and he didn't, you know, he did, couldn't take his lightsaber, his weapon with him, or maybe he did. He, was, he didn't need to, Yoda said he didn't need to, but he took it with him anyways. Mm -hmm. And he goes into this cave, and suddenly in this cave, and he got scary, he got scared, it was like this weird vibration in there, it was, felt a little cold, and suddenly Darth Vader showed up. And he got all afraid, and he pulled out his lightsaber, and Darth Vader didn't even pull out his sword, and Luke Skywalker cut off his head, do you remember? And Darth Vader's head fell on the ground, and Luke was wa looking at it, and then suddenly Darth Vader's mask on his head just popped open and it was Luke's face in Darth Vader's helmet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that freaked him out tremendously. Mm -hmm. You know, but that, that whole thing about for us men having some trials in our lives or, you know, as, a, as an institution like they are in African cultures, you know, this part of the tribe, you have to go out with the men and stay in the jungle for two weeks and survive and mm. you know for just as an example so we're missing that in the mm. modern world people yeah. go to rave parties instead and get shit faced drunk but they don't have that 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 no. opportunity to face some difficult life situation until until life does it to them automatically you know some something difficult happening something happens yeah yeah, yeah. but if you know you know what i'm talking about yeah right? definitely yeah, yeah. I think and I, yeah, I think really it's important because all people, and I think maybe particular men, they are urging or longing for that kind of longing. Yeah, yeah. that kind of uh, on the edge experience where they really have to wake up and 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 um, and, and step forward and really show up and 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 have that kind of experience. It's like it's uh, it's a part of of our our development naturally and. And today's society doesn't really have so much of those opportunities. Right. There's a lot of there's a lot of young guys who are like maybe in their mid twenties and they're still like little boys. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. But also, they, I think also that these uh, role models that a lot of males uh, don't have um, also have thought about it that this self development environment we are in or, or what you say there's not so many of these strong male voices or uh, you can say there's a lot of gurus and 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 persons like that but when if you're talking about um, working with yourself and your emotions there's a lot of qualities that are connected or usually connected with f female or feminine energy that how can you work with yourself and be the soft and have your feelings with you without losing your your strength yes yes and, uh, so i think it you also need to talk about yeah get out there and also be a, a role model to to we are out on our education here yesterday as role models that we are working now uh, to tell all the there was not a single man no, in the class there today, oh. there yesterday, yeah. and it was all women. Yeah, there's just women there. Yeah. Uh, How many uh, students would you say? Twenty five, maybe twenty five. Wow, yeah. remarkable. Yeah, and, and there was actually one man in the class, but he didn't show up. So, but it was like the needs in this uh, because not everybody uh, will be a yoga 
guru or to seek these very spiritual places. They have to be uh, more implement uh, implemented in the in society, in the school, in the education. And and if the male are not attracted or have these role models, they can it can be it in a different way. In uh, as a society, that could be a problem because then um, there will a lot of people will will never try to to get this peaceful warrior uh, feeling or uh, work with themselves in a different way if they feel excluded, maybe by um, all these women or female energy. Um, and you will you will find a role model, right? At some point, so you find maybe not a very calm warrior, a person like Trump or something like that. You find someone who is have a kind of a revolutionary energy and some kind of strength to him, but maybe in, uh, <laughs> not always uh, the most uh, constructive way. So, but it, but somehow people are like uh, longing for that. Right. Yeah. You said constructive. Um, well, he has a construction company. He wants to build a wall. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But that's so much. That's so I powerful. Know, that's I know. A, that's like the testosterone yeah, overboard. Yeah, yeah. Creator testosterone. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, um, um, Gustav, you mentioned that you had done martial arts or still presently do, and you must have noticed that at the beginning, when you were, when you started fighting mm -hmm. in the martial arts training, yeah. that it was a very nervous time at the beginning. Mm -hmm. To stand in front of an opponent, and even if you're wearing gloves and everything and a mouth guard, yeah. it's still a very terrifying thing. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you remember from your first few fights when you were trying to throw a punch, it was as if your punches were in slow motion. You know, yeah. because you hear stories who like new soldiers going out in battle, mm -hmm. and they can't shoot at the at the enemies; they mm -hmm. shoot above their heads. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like a programming in us. Yeah. And then when you get more and more comfortable in the fighting. Mm -hmm. And you stay calmer mm -hmm. because because when you're first fighting and you're all nervous, you you use up your energy like it just yeah. goes very quickly. Your batteries go to zero very quickly. Yeah. But once you once you get more comfortable in it, and once you're able to stay calm while fighting, mm -hmm. the other person can, especially if they're a new fighter, they can just lose all their energy, and then you just take over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So have, you've you've gone through that training in your life, mm -hmm. and your your how has that affected you? to integrate your male energies in a healthy way, your inner female energies in a healthy way. How has that happened for you? Well, I think for me that the physical physical way of, of doing this kind of, being in this kind of energy has been very natural for me. Uh, so exactly like you mentioned there, like laying on the jiu-jitsu mat or something like that and really struggling with a instructor and I, I push all my energy and he doesn't seem to to kind of use a single muscle in his body, and, and after a while, I'm just laying there and being strangled out or something like that. Yeah. And and then little by little, starting to relax and and being able to move my body in a more relaxed way, in a more precise way. Uh, so the physical way of doing this has kind of been a model for me, for me to also look at my everyday life. To, so you've been able to apply that into your everyday life. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. And can you give some examples of that? Because there's there's a lot of young guys out there who haven't done martial arts and they haven't gone through this this breakthrough, you know. Yeah. And they, they haven't they don't have they haven't had that chance to apply it into their lives. So yeah. what would you suggest? Well I'd say the, the give some examples the, of how it affected your life but the body the, just working with the bodies because you can you can work, you can be calm and person your body on the jujitsu mat, but you can also be like in, in the relationship with your with your woman for example. So the ability to to tune in to my to my breath and and stay present whenever she is Emotional or uh, is stressed out, stressed out, out or anything freaking like out, that. Yeah. yeah, it gives a good, really good groundwork to be present in in, the, in in that situation. And like when it comes to planning for doing work or studying or doing something like that, creating that base, solid base, to be able to be more focused and present for whatever situation that comes up. Yeah. Right, and to take the necessary action when it's necessary. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I, I before our chat today, I mentioned to you guys, um, Darren Brown, 
this British hypnotist, mm -hmm. brilliant guy, and, and I will send you the links to especially yeah, three do. of his episodes. There's three of his episodes that dealt specifically with young men, like in their mid twenties, who were just like still like little boys in their emotional psychological development, and they were living at home with their parents and. They were the ones dictating what everyone watched on TV, you know, like the little children throwing a little tantrum. So, you know, this Darren Brown, he set up these three different situations for these three different guys, and they were just utterly remarkable. One of them, if you're listening, is called, you can find it on YouTube, full, find the full episodes are like 45 minutes. One of them is called um, Hero at 30,000 Feet. Hero at 30,000 feet. Mm -hmm. The second one was called, um, was a two-parter. It was called The Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. That's one I mentioned to you where he set up this situation where it was like the end of the world for this one guy and yeah. he freaked out just like in a movie, you could imagine. And the third situation was where he took something, um, maybe you've never heard of this, MK Ultra. Have no. you ever heard? I haven't. It's a CIA program that was discovered to make assassins uh, create assassins who could be hypnotized and after they assassinated someone they wouldn't remember anything about it it's called the assassin the episode is called the assassin mm -hmm. and in those three episodes he he shows how easily manipulated these young guys are and how they how they can be turned into assassins or um or or he puts them in these difficult situations where they have to go through this thing where they finally grow up. Mm -hmm. They finally take responsibility. They finally become more conscientious and considerate towards others. Mm -hmm. Instead of me, 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 it's more like us and mm -hmm. life and, you know. So, yeah. but, and I also sent you guys a TED Talk with this guy named Wim Hof. Did mm -hmm. you see it by any chance? I've seen him before. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know him? No. Oh, it's the guy, it's yeah. an, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. And he's like a positive role model for... Yeah. For men to get in touch with the male energy, but in a in a soft, kind way. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's amazing. Yeah. What what did you know about Wim Hof, and what did you were you impressed by him? And can you say something a little bit to describe him? To yeah, him definitely. I mean, I, I can't really exactly remember. I think he had this. Uh, his wife died or something like that, right? To start with, I think, right. He has, he has some kind of hard experience where he had made a life change for him. I can't exactly remember what it was. Brutal shock to his life. His yeah. wife died somehow. Yeah. And, and that was, as I remember, the situation which became a kind of turnaround for him and, and then started to explore and practice different practices in his body and in his mind. and. And, and starting to and in the cold and in the cold yeah yeah and by going into the cold uh, starting to uh, access certain potentials within himself and in his body and mind and so on and has become a big role model model for a lot of people in yeah in the, in the Western world at least yeah and especially for a lot of young men <clears throat> men in general and I recently started doing the, his breathing technique and mm -hmm. to get exposed to the cold and to get harder, to get stronger against the cold, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, so he recommends like taking, fit, taking a shower and finishing with 30 seconds of cold water. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable program. And when I, when I started doing this program, I realized the type of breathing he was doing was a very advanced, very high level yoga breathing mm -hmm. that you can only do if you're in a good mood and, you know, yeah. if you strengthen your body enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he mm -hmm. does it right off the bat and he does it really well. Yeah. yeah. Check it, check him out. Mm. He, he's got the world records for many things having to do with being in ice. Yeah. He, he could be in ice, in a block of ice for like two hours. Mm. You know, and then you think about how hard it is to put your hand in a bucket of yeah, ice water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like more than ten seconds, and it's painful. He he could stay in there for for mm. hours. Mm. Yeah, mm. and he can do stuff that is said to be like uh, autonomous stuff for the body, autonomous nervous system stuff, yes. where you shouldn't be able to access and control. And right, the parasymp access. parasympathetic and nervous exactly. system. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. automatic things. That, yeah, yeah, he can affect his. Blood pressure, I think, his heart rate, mm. his his body, his core body temperature. Exactly, yeah. Remarkable guy. Yeah, it's really, really exciting. Stuff. And he said he said that nature was his teacher. Mm. Hard nature. Yeah. 
and he just does these things to show people like what you guys are mm. doing to show like us men you know mm. our potential and stuff yeah. he's he's showing a lot of people everyone's potential yeah. and again like in like five thousand years ago we nordic men we went to out in the cold weather into the snow and exactly so we uh, we have been there and our bodies have been there so i think it makes really good sense absolutely mm -hmm. getting weaker in homes that have too much heating and mm -hmm. you know and, yeah. and putting too much clothes against um, against the cold, mm. right, yeah. right, yes, exactly, what you're talking about, mm. yeah. yeah, so, and one of the, the interesting, yesterday I went to your class, I just went wearing shorts and a t-shirt, because I just done his technique of taking uh, a cold shower, yeah. and so I just walked all the way from here, all the way to Kui, mm. and t-shirts, and people were just looking at me, because yeah. I was like, wearing hats, and gloves, and thick jackets, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have a good friend in, in Copenhagen here also who's been practicing with him and he, he drives a, a, a bicycle taxi and he often drives around in shorts and, and kind of a t-shirt in the middle of the winter so <laughs> it really goes into that. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah. But he must, he must have gained a lot because the Wim Hof thing isn't only about becoming stronger against the cold and it has more to do with like elevate, increasing your level of consciousness. Mm. That's actually what's hidden in his teachings you know because i've done meditation and yoga i can see right through that and was, i love what the guy is doing he's a real mo positive role model like you guys are you know thank you so yeah yeah is there anything else you want to add about this um everything we've been talking about or anything else yes be very welcome to uh, come and uh, and visit us in 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 for example Tinkwe on Wednesdays in, in Copenhagen, Copenhagen in Denmark in case you were in another country <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. have, you have to buy some extra tickets on your bus card to get here from, <laughs> from the US okay just <laughs> exactly so you we really very welcome to come and join us and see what we're doing because it's 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 really sh it's it should be experienced uh, one thing is talking about it but it should be experienced absolutely yeah. i agree and Johan, anything else from you uh, no, I'll just <laughs> say the same as Gustav. It really has to, you can talk a lot uh, about many things, but it has to be uh, yeah, experienced and by yourself. It's important that, it, it, that this power, um, awareness, and uh, it comes from yourself. So, so it's, uh, you can talk all you want, but right. it doesn't make the difference. Yeah, yeah, talk is cheap. Talk is so cheap. Yeah. And would you guys, you know, another thing about the, we're, we're not finished yet, but another thing with the male thing is that us men, when we focus on something, we can really do it. You, have you noticed that? Like discipline, like, like going to a martial arts class five times a week or whatever. Or mm -hmm. I, was at, I was taking yoga classes at someplace else and I've got this discipline part of me and I would go four or five times a week to collect more than anyone else, really, I thought it was no big deal. And my wife says, no, it's unusual, you know. Mm -hmm. But you guys are, you guys have focus too. And my friend Lars, who I interviewed in one of the podcasts, he also has hardcore focus. So it's mm -hmm. like really great to see this, you know, that with you guys and, mm -hmm. and us doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. It's important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming for this interview and, and looking forward to it. And, and it, I think it was a lovely interview for anyone to listen to, not just men, right? Not just no, men. Not just men. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and, and thank you guys for listening to the podcast, the Crooked Pass podcast, and I hope you enjoyed it and listened to some other ones too. Have a great day. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.